going to show you all a quick tutorial on uh, how I tie with my more favorite minnow patterns, kind of a mullet mullet type deal for redfish. It's got a double XL B chain eyes and tied on a two watt thirty four double o seven. So uh, hopefully you can see that you've got your crafter tail some uh, rubber legs, tarantula brush, and uh, the eyes up front. I've started to tie them on heavy dumbbell eyes as well. And this one you can see I put a flash collar of the uh, UV polar chenille. That's been a pretty killer pattern for me to get a little deeper. But uh, let's go ahead and get started. We've got a, again, a 2 watt 34007 in the vise. And uh, Pretty, pretty easy tie, super easy, um, not too many materials, you can crank them out and uh, fish really like them. So again, first material is your craft fur, just starting with the white extra select craft fur. And uh, what I like to do is I take the, the whip finishing tool and actually use that to kind of pull my material. So I'll come here and grab a section of it. So as I do that, I grab a pretty good clump, pretty about a half inch by half inch square. Usually gets us a pretty good start. We'll pull out all the short fibers once we get it clipped. So again, kind of grab midway up, Pull out all the shorts, throw those in your trash can, throw them on the ground, wherever you put your extras. You can see this is pretty wavy material here, great in the water. It's a little thin, so we're going to grab another, another square, kind of add those up, get them all roughly the same length. Lay that down, grab our next section here. Pull that up, give ourselves a cut. You can use a lot of different fiber here, any kind of yak or um, marabou I've used a couple times on these. The pseudo hair works pretty well, it's a little thicker. I don't think it swims as well as the craft fur does. But uh, you're just looking for a nice breathing fiber. Bucktails can be a little too stiff, so I wouldn't use that. Um, that tarantula brush creates a head and this kind of waves in behind it. So go ahead and lock that in. I'm not too, too worried about length. I don't really do hook measurements. If you were to do that, it's probably a hook length and a half to two hook lengths, but you can obviously shorten it, play with it a little bit, see what you like, see what kind of motion you're getting out of the tail. But again, you're tying it back into the, the point of the barb here and uh, latch that in. Come in next with your rubber legs if you choose. I'm not going to do the rubber legs on this one, but again, if you were to tie your rubber legs, just stack two on one side and then fold the two over on the other side. Pretty pretty quick tying point there. Again, this UV polar chenille, I use that for underbody or really any flash midway up to the body. It's great. Longer fiber. It's, for any of you that have used uh, the Palmer chenille or anything like that, same deal. This uh, is that silver color. And again, Palmer this forward. This material, the, the core of this is pretty stiff, so you can pull on it pretty hard. So each wrap, you're noticing pretty good tension. You don't want any loose wraps. You don't want any teeth getting under there, pulling those out. So touching wraps moving forward, I wrap this almost to the front of where I tied in the craft fur. So that's probably what eight eight wraps or so forward and then lock that in. Clip off the tag, pull this back, straighten everything out. Give yourself a good clean thread base. You can see you got a nice little collar there, a little flash collar mid-body. Uh, next material is going to be your tarantula brush. I'm using the white for this, just the one inch tarantula. 
It's got some of these rubber legs in it. Nice little notion. We're not going to trim this at all, so it's nice to have a little bit of that, that bugginess to it. So this is a great kind of, as I was saying, mullet, shrimp, just critter type fly that if you put in front of a, a cruising redfish or laid up redfish or really kind of any predator, you're, you're going to be pretty happy with the results. The, uh, so tie that in. I bring this back about the length. I'm going to see if I, these will set here for us. So about the length back of the bead chain eyes is where you want to tie it in. You want to give yourself enough space up the front of the fly. So crossing wraps here, get a couple, lock it in, bring back the other way, start to push on it, bring your X wraps. And again, a lot of tension on these. You gotta be careful the way you cut your cut your bead chain because it loves to cut your thread. And then you're stuck doing what I'm doing here. So again, good and secure there. The, these again are the double XLs I've used, or the, the XL, sorry. I've used the largest before, those work well. I wanted to get a little more weight on this, this fly. So you can see, obviously they look a, a little big, but the nice thing about these is it'll still ride hook point down. So polymer this one forward just the same as you did with the UV polar chenille. This likes to wrap over itself a little bit more than the than the chenille does, so really comb it back each stroke. I start with touching wraps to get a little bit more of a body at the back. As you get up behind the eyes, you can spread them out a little bit more. And then when you get up to the eyes, we're going to do some crossing wraps to make sure we get some good coverage over those. So one more wrap behind the eyes here. So you got a pretty good body there. You're going to come over the top, under on the side, closer to the camera, back over the top. And then at this point, you've reversed your wrap, so you need to kind of wrap the reverse way forward in front of the fly. There's probably some better ways to do that, but this works pretty well for me. You get a good nose on the fly, and you get good coverage over the eyes. And then when you're up here at the front, it's easy to wrap that material in. So again, you've got that tied in, get a pair of scissors you don't care about, or a pair of wire cutters, snip that wire. With that wire core, you can really pull on this material the whole way up. A lot of times you have a thread core and you run the risk of breaking if you pull too hard. This stuff, each wrap, really crank down on it. Same principle as when we tied in the other. You don't want teeth getting under that and pulling it loose and breaking, breaking that connection. So, kind of pick this out with your hand. If you got a brush, you can use that. The rubber legs tend to break in some of the brushes, so just be careful. Once you pick that out, we'll come over here and grab our mono. This is a 20 or sorry, 30 pound mono. What I like to do with this, just grab your pliers, flatten the end of it. Make sure you're straight with the bend of the line so you can see how it's curving up. I crimp that. Give myself a good flat tie-in point, invert the fly, and tie that in right there on the bottom. And then once you've gotten it started, make sure it's laying flush on the bottom. Crank down a couple more wraps. Pull this forward and wrap in behind it really to prop it up. Make sure it sits out, and we'll make sure we glue this good. So again, a couple wraps in there behind, prop it up, bring it in front, grab the whip finisher, lock that in, pull tight, cut the tag, and 
and then I try to bring it just a little bit past the tip of the hook on my weed guard and you've got yourself a nice mullet shrimp pattern for any redfish, snook, tarpon, you name it, they'll eat it. Um, obviously I've got it in a bunch of different colors and as I said I've tied it with the dumbbell eyes as well. That will force it to ride hook up and uh, better for some of that deep water. But these are killer patterns, caught a lot of redfish on them. Happy time!